So we are here today to talk about trust. Trust is at the very core of every human relationship and about the, in the core of every business relationship. And trust, as Santosh Kaur said, it starts with truth and ends with truth. If we don't have truth and we cannot be certain about the, the, the truth about what we are doing, we cannot have trust at all. So, to simplify this analysis, because it's a, such a deep uh, uh, topic to talk, so we decided to show, uh, to divide how we deal with trust uh, into five frameworks along the history. So, <laughs> it's okay? Sorry, guys. Okay. We need to put more strength. <laughs> So, uh, in the beginning of times, when we were just, you know, small villages, small communities, we always uh, build trust relationships uh, in a face-to-face -face way, in the peer-to-peer, -peer, in our small community that was enclosed somewhere in the middle of the world. Uh, that worked very well, so the reputation was the main currency at that time. And you could know exactly with whom you are having a relationship or doing business or, uh, you know, who you could trust. But along the time, uh, this, uh, the world starts to be more complex. We start having cities, we start having estates, and we moved on to build trust via institutions. So, and the institutions, they stayed and they are still here. <laughs> and we know about all the problems you have. So it's a lot of, uh, it's a necessity. We know about the role of the institutions, but we know that's very complicated as well. So, and after a long time <laughs> having this model, we start having the advent of the big techs, and especially with the advent of Web 1.1 and Web 2.0. Uh, and from there, it was, really nice at the beginning, and it is, it's at the core of everything we do today. Um, and during the crisis of 2018, we had, a, a, the society and the companies had an idea on how to get away from the crisis better. So we decided to use the power of this techno these technologies to combine with the community and the face-to-face -face and peer-to-peer to create the sharing economy. And after that, we have some, we're gonna discuss this better, and then we have the moment we are, which is the blockchain, to be another framework, an important one, to create trust. So, this kind of uh, relationship uh, had, you know, how it should be. So, as we said, community, peer-to-peer, -peer, social norms, word of mouth, that close relationship, Institutions would allow us to have a broader geographical reach, um, having the same rules for everybody, having clear procedures on how to access the, uh, to access the service, to access you know, your assets, and how to regulate our society. And with the big techs, it was even better because uh, with the institutions, we had the gatekeepers, right? So we had the institutions knowing the procedure, which was most often than ever something really hard to understand, especially here in France. <laughs> if you live here, you know how administration can be a nightmare and how it's impossible to figure out what you have to do. It always depends on who is on the other side, although institutions and administrations were created to be the opposite. But uh, with the big techs, uh, we had the opportunity to have all the information available all the time to everybody, anywhere. You know, it should be reliable, unfiltered, the information is there. So that was like a, a dream compared to what we had. But if we do, back, one more. If you do a reality check, a reality check here, we will see, it's a little bit, yes, that 
we had issues in, over, across all those frameworks. So the, cross, uh, the reputation that was local and attached to the community, they are not cross borders. So if you, arrive at the, if you would arrive in the, in the new place where nobody knew you, or you didn't know anybody, how would you know to whom you could trust? You know, or what were the different societal, societal and cultural differences? It's really hard to know. And everything was always relied on who knows who. Like, in a certain way, it's the same with the institutions, with governments, with administration, the financial service. If you know the right person, you can navigate and get it right. But if you don't, it can be really complicated. So we have the ultimate middleman taking care of everything. And that's the perfect recipe for corruption and for everything we know that will undermine trust to everybody. And with the big techs, when we thought that everything would be, you know, much better, uh, we ended up realizing after a long time that we were the product. You know, everything that looked free and readily available, uh, it was actually with a much higher cost. And we start being victims of data breach, fraud, algorithmic manipulations, and, you know, profits over truth all the time. And if we go further, yes, <laughs> this is a, a, the fight for today. We cannot trust this ticker <laughs> very much, but we'll get there. So the sharing economy, so as I mentioned briefly in the beginning, we decided to do what? Uh, to use the powerful engines of the big techs and of the online communities to try to mimic uh, the peer-to-peer -peer community trust relationships we had uh, and to allow people uh, to give a leap of trust, you know, to be able and to feel comfortable um, on staying at a stranger's house or bringing a stranger to stay at your place, to drive someone, a stranger in your car, you know, and at the very core of it, powered by the crisis, the subprime crisis from 2008, it was a way initially to decrease inequality, to have access, uh, to allow people, to, everybody to have access to assets and service without the middleman, right? So we would be able to use those platforms to stay in places we couldn't afford, that we couldn't buy, or we wouldn't need to buy a car or something that was very expensive, but we could have access to the service. So it was a really nice concept. But in reality, um, we, uh, with uh, hyper growth going above truth all the time, above, going about, above trust all the time, so the necessity of having this hyper growth in all those companies that demanded huge amounts of investments we start, in the end, having the ultimate middleman, right? So we change the institutions to the biggest platforms, you know, because they were not the actual... Whoa. Let's go back a little one. Uh, we didn't have this... They became the ultimate middleman, as I was saying. And what we saw, it was like an increase in fraud, an increase in fake profiles, fake reveals, uh, a complete lack of trust powered by the lack of an online to offline, as I like to say, verification. So how do I know that that person, is the re that person online is the real person? In, the, uh, in, in your platform, it's the real person coming to stay at your place. And what's the most complicated part, in my opinion, it's how we develop really distorted, uh, really distorted market dynamics. So we started 
to be able to stay whenever we couldn't afford. But uh, right now, because, for example, of Airbnb, I think if anyone here has tried to rent a long term, uh, to get a long term rental in Paris or in Lyon or in Munich or in any interesting city, you know how the rent prices are really high, how hard it is to get an apartment. Because most of the nice offers, they are on an Airbnb at very inflated ra uh, rates, right? So it's um, a problem that's causing, instead of decreasing, we are increasing the inequalities in the costs of living. Um, the same happens with the gig economy, especially during the pandemic and during the COVID crisis. A lot of people, they just lost their jobs, you know. And the gig economy that was supposed to be something nice, uh, some money you could do, on, you could make on their side, you know, like to complement your income, it became the only option for a lot of people. And because hyper growth is the, the ultimate priority, uh, what we had is that in this gig economy, their uh, salaries and the money they were making were every time lower and lower. And the access to a normal marketplace, to the normal jobs, became very much more complicated. So, but uh, when we look back to every one of those changes, ah, what do we have in common, right? What do we have in common? So all those disruptions, all those changes in how we see the world, uh, they are powered by crisis, you know? Because when we have a crisis, it's when the money can change hands. It's when you have the opportunity to change the market dynamics. And that's exactly in the moment that people are more open to accept huge innovations. You know, like for example, we just said about the sharing economy. So, if you look into all the institutional crises, the list is very long. So, it's a, all, throughout this, the history, it's a very long uh, list of moments. And it's still, it's a big problem that we cannot solve properly uh, until now. So, in 2001, with the dot com bubble, it's another big example with the advent of the internet, and especially in 2008 with the subprime crisis. Uh, and the sharing economy is just one big example of what happened there. So every single one of those companies, they were built during the subprime crisis or just after. At that moment, I was lucky to be in, in Silicon Valley, so I saw all those companies being born and being built. I had the chance to speak with many of their founders when they were just starting, Uber and many other companies, and to use their service right in the beginning. And they really were created from a really fundamented ground, you know, like a real necessity that everybody had. But uh, uh, over the history, that's something that's always happened when we go and focus on you know, the quick growth and profits, which is great. Everybody wants to make money. So sometimes you, we end up like distorting what we planned in the beginning. And right now we are exactly at the crypto winter, right? So if we look back and we look into in, under this perspective, we will see that now is the perfect time to invest and to build. That's the time. Because when the market's low, it's the perfect time to build. It's the perfect time to take advantage of how people are open to disruptions and the perfect time to look back and learn from the mistakes of the previous cycles and to build great things moving forward. So, again, so the best time to change the world is now. I cannot think about a better time, you know? Uh, I think that everybody that's a beginner, they, are, they might be scared uh, looking at the crypto winter, but I think that's the right timing. So that's when we can differentiate who is just speculating, because this speculation, pure speculation, it's what caused the previous cr uh, crisis and the change of paradigms. Uh, and it's the right time to build, to build what matters and to change the world for better. So at Veritas, 
uh, we are working multiple uh, solutions for that. So we say that the world will be veritized. So if we can guarantee trust, if we can guarantee that, for example, one of our solutions, a job applicant CV was verified. So imagine how much time you, want to say, you, you can save. You know, if your candidates, they come to you with a CV that was, you know, endorsed, really uh, veritized, as we say, you know, verified through the blockchain. So if you can focus on those candidates, you can save a lot of time and a lot of a headache in the future if something wasn't right. Or products, you know, uh, how you can validate and track all the products and how it's the you are t speaking with the, uh, an authentic, you have an authentic product and you are speaking with their real owner. And many other things that we are building. Those solutions you are welcome to see in our booth, just over there. But our main mission is to bring back trust for every one of those frameworks with pragmatic solutions to bring, bring back trust at scale. So we do have everybody here in this room working in blockchain. We have the opportunity to do so. And hello. Uh, and why? Because the blockchain revolution, we don't need to go in so many details, but that means trust by design. Uh, through decentralization, we can guarantee authenticity, validation, verification. Uh, we can have a clear verifiable logic behind and through immutability, transparency and security we can guarantee trust and we can do that without the subjectivity of the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, relationship and let's go that's a, a fight that's the fight from today so doing so um, from using our technology and use blockchain, uh, we can assure immutability, transparency, and security. Uh, so some people say that the um, definition of trust depends on three main pillars, which is authenticity. So I tend to trust a person or a business if I am sure that the, that person, or that if I feel that that person or that business is being authentic, uh, and that that person or that business is being authentic under a certain logic, uh, under, a cle under clear rules and a logic that's verified, and that's, um, I understand. Uh, and using those two pillars, so the third pillar of trust is empathy. And what we can do uh, as Veritas, so guarantee immutability, transparency, and security, we can guarantee authenticity and logic and give the choice to people to bring back empathy as well. So we know that, especially after COVID crisis, how empathy has become even more, even more and more important for the society to make a better world. So with us and with our technology, we can ha give you guys the option to bring that back to not just trust and give you the option by true trust, bring back empathy to the world too. So Ronald Reagan used to say that always trust, but, veri but verify. So here we like to say trust, but verify, veritize. Thank you very much.